Hey everybody, and welcome to an energetic wild ride with Steve. We've got Sebastian Bach, and let me tell you, this guy is a riot. I mean, he just comes into the van and he's on fire, and he's more fun and more candid about just a checkered, sleazy past than you could ask an 80s hair metal legend to be. I mean, it doesn't get more fun than this. So strap on your seatbelts and let's get to it. Woo! We're here. <sighs> nice. How you doing? Good. Can my kids meet you, dude? Of course, this? man. They're bet. all, they're so excited. Yeah, you bet, dude. All right. Um, so before, uh, just before we start, let me just get a sense of anything that you want to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, how about the 80s? <laughs> <laughs> you avoid that? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm not always about... I'm just joking. I mean, there's a couple of really horrible things I did so that I don't like talking about. All right. But, you know, I mean... I, mean, I, think, I think we'll, uh, you know... We'll, we'll Whatever. It is what it is. Speaking. It is what it is, man. All right. Well, dude, like I'd say we just keep that because that was really funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Sebastian Bach. Hi. Hello. Yeah, dude. Yes. I'll tell you, everybody who I have mentioned in passing that we're going to meet up with you mm -hmm. has like, their head has exploded. They're so excited about it. My lady... Can't even believe it. Like, yeah, my uh, girl was stoked too. Yeah, everybody's super, super stoked. Well, the very first thing I want to say to you, Steve, well, this is the first time I'm ever meeting you, but it's not. Okay. <laughs> because guess what? What? You always tell the story about, and I just heard it on the Eddie Trunk show the other day on your interview, how you called Scott McGee in yeah. Toronto. And got a hold of him at the hotel, and he got you backstage at Motley Crue. Yeah. I was there, too, backstage at that show. Wow. And I have pictures backstage with Nikki, and, and I was there, too. So it all matches up, the same outfits and everything, huh? I'm just saying, you were, uh, you're a little younger than me. Yeah. But not much. Yeah. And you were at that gig, and I was at that gig. I mean, my story for that gig's a little different, though. Because my band was called VO5. We had the five coolest hairdos in Toronto. Yeah, this is when And our logo, I steamed <laughs> off the VO5 shampoo bottle, and that was our logo. VO5. Yeah, we only did two shows. It wasn't a big band, but... One of the shows, Nikki and Tommy came. It was the night before that gig. And Nikki and Tommy came to our gig at Rock and Roll Heaven downtown across from Harvey's on Bloor. Right at near the corner of Young and Bloor. You used to walk down them stairs and there was this club there. I don't know if you were old enough to get in. No, no, no. I was 13 okay. on that day. Yeah, okay. So... So Nikki and Tommy came, and everybody goes to me, Hey, man! Nikki and Tommy are here, and they're looking for the best blow in T.O. And I'm like, Hello! I'm the f***ing singer of the band! For f***'s sake. And they're like, Right this way, singer of band! And guess who had the best blow? In T.O. <laughs> that was me, man. And they were my best f buddies that night. Dad, Tommy that... and Nikki, we were <laughs> fucking doing Zooters. some schnozola. <laughs> some, <laughs> some sniffle snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Some schnoz. <laughs> some beer sodas. <laughs> and, uh, and they're like, you're coming backstage tomorrow. I go, yeah, I am. You better believe it. Dad. I was like the best. Did you bring blow backstage the next night? Yes, I did. And I brought black hash, and I was smoking it in the backstage room. And Fred <laughs> Saunders said, hey, hey, please, don't don't smoke hash backstage. And I was like, fuck, it's Motley Crue. Like, Dude, how about that show, <laughs> Yeah, too? wow. How about that show? When, that was the uh, 80s, by the way, I have to say, for <laughs> all these people listening. The, uh, the This was the Girls, Girls, Girls tour. 87. Of mm -hmm. 1987. And this was the tour when Tommy Lee's drum set right. came up 
over the crowd and then rotate it upside yeah. down. I have a funny story about that too. And at the beginning of that drum solo, there was like, all right, you know, Vince, Vince says, you want to have a drink with the crew, Toronto? Yes. And uh, so then like, Nikki Six like brings a bottle of Jack Daniels. He's like, all right, we're gonna and and Nikki like pours, he's like sprays the crowd with yes. the with the Jack Daniels so that they can like tell it's real whiskey. They're not like you know, it's it's not fake. Right. And then, so now it's like cheers to the crowd. We're gonna have a drink, and Nikki like just puts the bottle upside down, just chugging. And on each chug, Tommy Lee like boom. <laughs> Boom. Like timing the chugs with like drum beats, boom, boom. And they're putting and down a fifth. Putting just <laughs> chugging whiskey, and that's how, <laughs> and that's how the drum solo started, boom, boom, boom. You know, and that like what an epic way to start a drum solo. Well, I have a couple of comments to that. Is the the tour before, two tours before, because there was theater of pain. Yeah, and I went to that. I went to in Toronto, and then me and my buddies got in our car and drove to Ottawa and watched it again. Um, and but the tour before that, the first time Motley Crue played Toronto was "Shout at the Devil." So they would have been opening for Ozzy. No, except was opening for them. Nice. They were headlining wow. right, at the wow. little tiny CNE <laughs> Grandstand Arena, which was like four thousand seater. So we were so freaked out that Motley Crue was headlining. In Toronto on the Shout the Devil tour, so we got a bunch of mushrooms and went and stayed overnight in line. Like we got there at nice. like six p.m. <laughs> and I was like fourteen. <laughs> nice and doing f-ing shrooms. Okay, now this is in Nikki's book. <sighs> Which one? I mean, he said, "What is it like book four now or something?" <laughs> yeah. Well, so this stories. was in the book. We woke up, okay, and we didn't really sleep, obviously, right? We thought it was a great idea, and fucking we're all whacked out and hopped up on shrooms and shit. And we're right at the very, very front. In fact, me and my buddies are smushed up against, like, the glass, like this, like, like this, like. (laughs) And all these croutons are behind us pushing. And this guy, this crazy guy next to me with no shirt on and shit, and he was all drunk and everything. And he goes, this shit, he goes, we're not staying here. And he turns around and he, this is all true. He kicks the glass out of the front of the CNE grandstand doors. And I go, and we bend down and the whole crowd runs in. Wow. And there was like a thousand kids, and we rushed the stage. <laughs> I remember this like yesterday, and the crew's on the stage, and they back up and go, Whoa, whoa. And we get right to the front, and we go, Crew, 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 crew. <laughs> and it was like 2 p.m. <laughs> and they're best. trying to set up. Sound check. <laughs> yes. And Nikki remembers this. They had to pay. He goes, That was you? I go, Well, it was a guy next to me, but I was the first one in. And they had to pay for all the new doors and shit. Wow. And the cops well, the came band in. did? Yes, the cops came in and said, get the fuck out of here, and we were all scared, we were going to get arrested, and that was fun times. Jesus. Wow. Shout of the devil, yeah, but that was good. That was a different time, like, if any of my kids are watching this, like, I don't yeah. do it anymore. <laughs> I mean, dude, what a, the, dude, the 80s, man. I, and I, then, wait, there's another, sorry, there's another story when you talk about Tommy's drum kit revolving. Yeah, yeah. Um, we my, we opened every show on the Doctor Feelgood tour. Okay. In Skid Row in '89 in Europe, the whole tour. Uh huh. And I had a little fling with uh, Christina Applegate. Um, oh wow! I don't know if you really? know her story when she goes, "I left Brad Pitt one night for some guy." And I'm not going to even say who it was. Hello. That (laughs) That would be me. That was her with the (laughs) married to children days. That was the MTV awards that night. And she came with Brad Pitt and left with me, mother drugger. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. True story. So I fly her to Paris to see me play with Motley Crue. And her mom comes and her aunt comes and we go to the Eiffel Tower. We... Go to dinner and all this stuff. So at the Motley Crue show, 
going up and standing right side stage, and Nikki goes, hey, he's standing up on the top thing, and I'm like, hey, man, because I was like, I didn't want to be like, you know, the guy f***ing the shit up on the stage. Yeah. So, so I go, we better move, you know, like, so we walk across and Tommy, Tommy's Trump goes up and starts turning and then it stops and he's stuck. And I thought I fucking unplugged his drum kit. <laughs> no, I go, holy, f we got to get the fuck out of here because we, I was walking right there and then it stopped and he's like <laughs> hanging upside down in France. And I go, oh my God, I fucking unplugged his drums and... The show's wrecked, and I, it was a f***ed up night. He was, like, hanging upside down because he wanted a key yeah. bump. He was just waiting for the bike. <laughs> but I thought I kicked out the cord, Dude, you Tommy. know, and he's upside down, and I was like, I must have. Did Tommy tell us about how uh, oh his, his drum techs would, like, come and... Oh, and just shovel it into his nose. Yeah, yeah that was. Uh... Wasn't it like they were like? I used to do that with some Guns N' Roses guys. They did like used to do it like it was like bottle caps full. <laughs> like, God, yeah, beer bottle cap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. W were you there the night that Guns N' Roses tried to outdrink Motley Crue? There's a shocker. Scott Randolph wants to talk about rock stars drinking. Well, I want to talk about rock stars eating. The rock stars I'm talking about are my cats. Do you have cats? Are your cats eating kibble? Because I'm telling you, that's the equivalent of gas station food. I've come to realize, man, that my pets deserve to eat better than crappy kibble. First, I started feeding fresh, human-grade food to my dogs. Then, I found out about this company called Smalls. They make fresh, real, properly healthy food for cats. And... The cats are a lot happier and a lot healthier because of it. And, man, this company is so fantastic. They've got an offer for you that is not only risk-free, but it's 50% off and free shipping. And if your cats don't love this fresh, very real food that they make, then send it back and get your money back. It's risk-free. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, dude, my cats, I care about them. I love them. I love all my animals. And I want them to have the best lives possible. And it's all about their nutrition. So Smalls is the way to go. If you want to try this, you go to Smalls, S-M-A-L-L-S dot com slash Stevo. And use the promo code Stevo. You're going to get 50% off your first order plus free shipping and it's totally risk-free because if your cat doesn't absolutely love it, then send it back. Get your money back. I mean, dude, it doesn't get any better than that. And if you love your cats, then do this for them, man. They deserve it. My cats do. So one more time. Go to smalls.com slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo to get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Now... Let's get back to it. And they ended up making, Tommy Lee was saying that, uh, who, who passed out? Uh, I think Steve Adler, I think. No, no, no. Uh, maybe Slash passed out and they put their balls on his forehead and they made that as the backstage VIP pass <laughs> for the show the next night. You remember him saying that on the, on the Tommy Lee episode? <sighs> uh, that, that's fantastic. I just remember Tommy taught me so much neato stuff like, like in Canada where we come from. Yeah. When I was a kid, we all smoked black hash, and it was like kind of an involved process. You would heat up the hash and then yeah, mix it with the tobacco, the tobacco. And then, you know, get a nice blend. We did this all day and then yeah. smoked that shit. But when I met Tommy Lee, he goes, you got anything to smoke? I go, yeah, I got some black hash. He goes, give me that. And it's just like a little cube. And he just takes it. And in his fingers with a match, he goes, <laughs> go, well, what the fuck? Like, he's just, he's not, it's not rolling it or blending. He's yeah. just, give me that fucking shit. No art. And I, I'm like, and I've, 
That's really cutting to the chase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think he's going for taste. Yeah, no, 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 he's just trying to get high. What a yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we, we asked. Um, like, we what? asked Tommy well, how they smuggle drugs into different like countries. Oh yeah. What was your favorite tactic? Well, I have a funny little story. We we opened for Molly Crew in Russia, the first Russian Jesus metal Christ. show. Oh, this is the one Moscow, where everybody yeah. was on That's the airplane right. and they yes. were sober. Yeah. Were they really sober? No. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can say that now. It's forty years ago. Yeah, right. They. Uh, but I said that then, and Tommy, I was backstage in Russia, and he's walking towards me. And he goes, "Did you fucking say?" And he grabs me. He goes, "Did you fucking say some shit?" And I go, "Wow!" And and I go, "If I was bar- bragging about drinking." With Motley Crue, I was such a fan. Like, yeah. how can you not say I was partying with the crew? I they, mean, sorry. They, they uh, would have a, the world believe that they recorded Dr. Feelgood all completely sober. And for me as a kid, and Whoa. what made me love Motley Crue, like, I had to boycott that album. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, you can listen to it. Yeah. So, so what, was, what was the story so behind I was this? In Ru- I was in Russia. I was in Russia. <laughs> and, uh, but was I asked, there. Yeah, I asked the road crew, the Russian road crew, you guys got any black hash, man? And this one Russian dude goes, oh, comrade, yes, you wait right here. And... He goes and gets me a bunch of hash, and and I'm telling Doc on the way home, I go, yeah, Doc, I had some leftovers, so leaving Russia, I had these pointy white boots, and I, I put them right in the toe, man, and I walk through the airport like that, and and I go, and, and uh, you know, and Doc looks at me and goes, oh, they'll never f-ing think of that. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> the first place whoa, they're gonna it, check. Whoa, whoa. I go, yeah. I put it in my shoe, and, and I was walking around. I goes, whoa. Yes, yeah, it's the first thing. That's some next check. level smuggling right there. <laughs> wow. Like, oh, they'll never f-ing think of that. Like, yeah. And I go, wow, maybe I shouldn't have did that. But what other, would know, by the way. What, 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 what other? Uh, <laughs> well, that's what the whole concert was about. What, what other places would you smuggle drugs into? Or would, you, or would you get them there? Well, let, let's clarify this right. I don't do... The only thing I like still is smoking weed, and Smoke that's weed. legal everywhere. I don't mess with nothing else. But I, in the 80s, it was back like... Back then, uh, we, we did coke. And we didn't know... We, honest to God, didn't know it was bad. I'll tell you when I knew it was bad. In, like, the year 91 or something. You can Google this. When did Len Bias die? Maybe that was 89. Uh, the basketball player. Yes. And that was not... That's that, right. that was from smoking crack, right? 86? I can't... Cardiac rhythm. Okay, then what I just said is bullshit. <laughs> so I'm like, that was the day! And I was definitely doing it after that day. <laughs> I mean... I was like, when I, I yeah, turned a new blur. leaf... <laughs> you might have found I'm out definitely about not an, No, but I remember saying, what do you mean? He died at yeah. 37 from doom blow. And oh. they go... And then people are explaining to me, well... You could, if you could, if you do a line and it hits your heart like the wrong way, you can have a heart attack and die. And I go, well, I, I don't like it that much, I, you know. And yeah. I really, really hate the feeling like when you run out and you're trying to go to sleep, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, there's none left, and you're calling people, and it's 11 a.m. and crying in the shower. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> look up, I look up, and I, I go, Lord Jesus, if you just. Yeah. Let me go to fucking sleep. I'll never <laughs> fucking do this again. Uh-huh. Dude, I remember. <laughs> For sure. And then you go to sleep and you do it again. I remember at like... the time when, like, when there was like the Moto, Motorola Razor mm-hmm. cell phone. Like, I, I was in such this hellish, oh. hellish condition that Sebastian's explaining. Oh my God. And like, I'm calling the drug dealer to oh. get more drugs because I want them so bad. Mm. But I'm so worn out. Like that, I'm gonna oh crash, God, yeah. and so I'm laying down on the floor and literally using my like my Motorola Razor as a pillow, <laughs> so, <What>? that, <laughs> so that if it rings, it wake me up, and so I can do more drugs. Oh but like, but if if not, then I'm just gonna fall asleep. Yeah, I remember. I remember when Metallica and Guns N' Roses played Giant Stadium in Jersey. I went to Manhattan to pick up the lead singer Hanoi Rocks, Mike Monroe. And we, 
and we had a ton of coke and we brought it there and I was all weirded out. This is what, like near the end of the days when it felt good. And so we're coming back to Manhattan, the sun's coming up, and I drop the shit on the floor, right? <laughs> we only have a tiny bit left, and it's a carpeted limo, and we're on our hands and knees going through the carpet. For sure. Looking for fucking... I go, yeah. dude, it's time to, time to fucking change your ways. <laughs> that that reminds me of the, the text, like, a, who is an addict? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, remember, I, I remember one time in L.A., at LAX, I had a gram of coke in a little bindle, a paper bindle. I had to fly it back to Jersey, so I put it in my sock. They'll never think of that. Yeah. Put it in my sock, <laughs> and when I got to Jersey, it was gone. It was f***ing evaporated from the oh. heat of just my feet. You sweated into your foot? And it was, I opened up a spot, I go, what a f***. Rip off! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it evaporated. Hmm. Uh, yeah, dude. Maybe okay, I'll... so, um, now, like, like, I, I got some a couple questions. Okay. Um, the, the, like, I, in my research, I learned that Skid Row was almost called Skid Marks. <laughs> Is, that, <laughs> Is that true? Well, I mean. People probably called us that anyway. Well, <laughs> well no, <laughs> what they said, they said that the, the band was not named after the homeless encampment in Los Angeles, but rather you guys were in a car and there was like a near accident or something, and like the car, like a car went like and left skid marks, and and then someone in the like saw it and said, "Oh, we'll call ourselves Skid Marks." That's not and, not true. Okay, well there we go. That is no. not true. We have we have busted the myth. Do you have a Bahamanian citizenship? Bahamian. Bahamian. Yes. I you do. do. You have a passport. I was no. I have a birth certificate. Okay. I was born in Freeport. Yeah. Born in Freeport, and when I go there, which is rarely, they make me go in the returning resident law. Really. So that's kind of neat. Nice. Yeah. Okay, now. The uh, legend has it that Skid Row got its big opportunity from Bon Jovi. That's true. But Bon Jovi got all the money. Well, that's true. <laughs> 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 so how did that work out for you? I mean, uh, no, but then here's what here's the honest to God truth. That is, that is true. That we signed a publishing a deal deal with him and. In order for us to sign it, he would take us on his tour. And we were just a bunch of nobodies. So let's go on tour in, in arenas. I mean, that doesn't happen every day. Okay, but what I thought it sounded like is that the publishing deal with Bon Jovi was uh, not a record deal. So no, like, what, you, what, what you need is a record deal. What do you need a publishing deal for? To get on tour with Bon Jovi. Uh, yeah. Like, like it, that's what it was. Because that just sounds to me like some Suge Knight holding vanilla well, ice off the balcony. <laughs> yeah, totally. They, they, yeah. No, the, I mean, nobody held me off the balcony, but but <laughs> no. all I can say about it is that there were so many bands at that time, right? There were so many bands. And the ones that made it were very far and few between. Like, making it was like a unicorn. And I understand what you're saying, but... Here's what we did. We had a bit. I quit the fucking band when when we when I understood what we signed. I said I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this again. So we had a big meeting with the um, lawyer Michael Guido, who's now Jay Z's like right hand business guy. He was our lawyer then, and I said I'm quitting unless. We're redoing the whole thing with Bon Jovi, and I get 25% of everything in the band. And there's five guys in the band, so that was kind of ballsy. But they said okay. And then our next record, so we redid that. We got out of that. And then our next record debuted at number one. There's really nothing better than getting out of a bad deal and going on to enjoy success. Let me give an example. Like, when I take a dump, if I wipe my butt with dry toilet paper, then I'm basically smearing poop around my anus and my butt cheeks. And as I walk through the rest of my day, I might develop a rash, some nasty chafing, a generally unclean, unhappy, and very unsuccessful feeling. 
but rather when I use my bidet from Hello Tushy, I am pressure cleaning the poop off my butthole so effectively that I walk through the rest of my day feeling like an absolute winner, like Sebastian Bach in that deal. You know what I mean? It's just incredible. It's my favorite sponsor of the Wild Ride podcast. I've always said this. It is my favorite product I've ever been introduced to by this podcast, Hello Tushy. I mean, you sit down on your toilet. When you get done with your sloppy dump, you twist the dial, and you've got that refreshing stream of water just power cleaning just ah there's something so satisfying about it i love it i love it i love it and you're gonna love it too you'd be crazy not to it's the best thing in the world so if you want to get 10 percent off your entire order you go to hello tushy.com that's h-e-l-l-o-t-u-s-h-y dot com and use the promo code stevo again for 10 percent off your entire order and it's going to be the best move you ever made. Your butthole is going to thank you day after day, like mine does. My butthole is a success because of HelloTushy.com. So, HelloTushy.com, use the promo code Stevo, and let's get back to it. On Billboard, and it didn't sell quite as many as the first, but it did very well. That's the second record. Yeah, Slave to the Ground. So you got in there and, and fixed that pretty yeah. quickly. Right. Well, How I just you? said I'm not doing it again. So yeah. So I was like, I'm out. So. It's just so glaring that you don't need a publishing deal. You need a record deal. Mm-hmm. Like a publishing deal just kind of comes with writing the music. The only, so it, was, right. it literally is the same thing as Should Night and Vanilla Ice, except just without the balcony. Or it's like, uh, you know, who's the old one? Like like uh, Otis Redding fucking shit. Like yeah. That. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you're right. But, but, but all I can say is that right. looking back, I have a great life and I, I get to play my music. I have a new record out coming very soon. My new song is on the radio and... So right like on. I mean you gotta you gotta sure, you, you gotta, gotta get dues. a break you, you gotta a, pay your dues that's, and you ha- if you have a break I mean looking back maybe it was worth it maybe it was yeah you know what maybe I mean, it he, was he put us in front of all his fans yeah and we stole a bunch of them how big were the shows that he was doing at the time oh they were that Seven was thousand no, no more no like more yeah like you know fifteen thousand arenas we did giant sta- stadium seventy five thousand. We, oh, wow. We did, you know, yeah. it, was the God. New, it was the New Jersey tour. We opened every show. Wow. Okay. And I was just yeah. a baby, though. I was 19. Wow. 19 and 20. And that was the first time you started touring? Touring, touring? No, touring in arenas. I toured before that. Yeah. Yeah. What's in the di- clubs. Yeah. What, what's that jump like? What's the difference between doing going from clubs to arenas? Like, is there just a VIP feel to it? Well... I had a problem understanding exactly what you're saying, and I would s- treat it still like I was in a club, and that ended getting me in trouble. Like, like well, well, how? You're... Like I would jump in and whoop some motherfucker's ass <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the fucking stadium. Oh hell yeah! I would do that. <laughs> yeah, wasn't like, it? I, 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 like to the point of where, dude, you're not in a club band anymore. Like, you, you know, like <laughs> now nah, the numbers are but bigger. I, I was just so young. Like yeah. it, another Motley Crue thing, like. One, you know, one time we got kicked off the Bon Jovi tour because I swore all the time on stage. But that was because, you know, like going to see Vince Neil in Toronto, his first thing he goes, Hey, Toronto, look at all the fucking pussy here tonight. And me and my buddies go, Wow, look at all the pussy, man. This is fucking great. And we thought it was hilarious, like that he would be talking like that. And bon I, I, I wasn't like, like a ma- it wasn't a mean putting down it was just funny to me and my friend yeah. we thought it was funny also D Snyder was hol- the way he would chew somebody out if they weren't getting into it or whatever it was just to me it was like comedy and and yeah. funny and like you better get off your fucking ass and rock are you buddies with D Snyder? Yeah, I love D. I love him. He's we, funny. We he's just had really, him on. Yeah, we just he's had him really on. He's really a funny guy, man. He's really funny. He's really smart. He's really. Yeah. He's really. He, you know, like he's. 
he's humble. Yeah. You know, like the way that he describes like just having been like it's such an egomaniac, so yeah. out of control, so impossible to deal with, and how like that just bit him in the ass and right. and forced him into humility. Like it's inspiring to talk to him. It is inspiring. And he's in such amazing shape for his age. Yeah. And and uh you know, his wife Suzette, they, like that's a great team. They've been married for 41 yeah. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Love, love D. Yeah. Um, now, uh, how, um, you said that, uh, that your only thing is, is the weed. That, like, the, yeah. and, and of course the booze. Just red wine. Nothing else. Okay. No shots. No beer. There no. was a point when... There was an issue there. Yeah, I used to drink all... Uh, we used to... In Skid Row, I, I try to tell this, like, everywhere we went, like, every... Like, if we got in a car from the airport together, there was a case of fucking beer in, in the car. If we yeah. were going to an interview, there was a cooler full of, yeah. of beer. Everywhere we went, <laughs> there was... There was Beer, so fucking drink that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. why, like why is it there? Like, what, so what, we were kind of always like a little bit fucked up, you know. What was on? <laughs> what, what was on your writer when you were? Well, uh, I mean, you know, it, we loved drinking beer back then, and Jack Daniels. Uh, then we discovered Duval beer, uh -huh. which was from Holland, and it was fifteen percent stronger. So we put that on the writer, and everybody was. Fucked when we put that on there. Because <laughs> like, fuck, this is some strong shit, man. Is this Canadian? Yeah. No. It's from Holland. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so you just managed to just reel it in, huh? I just now. don't, like, I, 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 nice headline. Is there. that an actual I quote from you? Every, well, I. I drank every night of my you life. You know what? Let, let, if I look at the years, <laughs> hang on. Like, if I look at, like, some years where, like, maybe 94 or 93 to, like, what's 25 plus 94? <laughs> 2000, 2019. I might have I, I, I had a little bit. I, I like it at night, you know. Yeah. I, but I'll tell you this. I didn't drink anything last night. Nothing. Huh. Nothing. All right. Did you have a? Uh, did you have trouble like slowing down from Here's, drinking oh, oh, all this that? This is an old cliche, but this is the God's honest truth. Learning to go to sleep on a tour bus for me and many of my friends involves having a couple of fucking drinks. <laughs> for sure. I, I'm just <laughs> being honest. So, so if I've spent all my life on a fucking tour bus. That's not a crazy headline. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just saying, I can't, I, I find it tough. I think the secret is to f fall asleep before it starts driving. Uh, man, I, I, don't I know. can't <laughs> sleep on the tour bus. And like, my problem is, no, I'll eat a very, bunch of melatonin, right. and then I get restless leg syndrome. Right. So then I'm just like, yeah, sorry, oh shit. Fuck. That was a nice thing. <laughs> so nice. Did you get that on film? Yeah, anyway. true. But I'll be in bed just like, ugh. And it's like five in the morning, you know, and I'm like, I'm fucked the next day. Well, my thing is, is that you usually roll into the next town about nine in the morning, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. So I'm not going to get in my bunk at three or four if I'm fucking going to have to get up mm -hmm. in a couple hours. My brain just says, why do that? Yeah. Anyways, another thing, too. I quit drinking for like maybe a year once and it was fucking complete misery <laughs> no i was I, why because i went to la and uh, a lot of people there were sober and shit and it was like a lot of people looked down on drinking at this time like what a loser you're having a fucking i was like i'm not a loser you know like so i got better i better i better put this shit down and see what that's like and all of a sudden, I got high blood pressure, and I went to the doctor, you know, physical, and I, and he goes, "What are you doing?" I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, you have like high blood pressure," I go, and I never did in my whole life. And I go, he "Goes, what are you doing?" I go, "Well, I quit drinking." And he goes, stressed. "He goes, he goes, what, what, what do you mean?" He goes, "What did you drink?" 
and I'd go, well, I'd go to like the best steakhouse in town, you know, five star fucking the rainbow. Well, <laughs> yeah, Spearmint Rhino. No, more like, more like in town here, the Golden Steer. Uh, or the, you that know, was not the Dan Tanners. They got yeah. a fucking hell of a What, what about yeah. the, the, the brass? What's brass it? Rail. Yeah, the Brass, brass rail. rail. That's the titty bar. Zanzibar. Trial. Yeah. Great God. chicken piccata. Are you from Toronto, too? No. Okay. But, uh, so so um, my daughter said, what did you drink? And I'd go, well, I'd go to the best steakhouse in town with my girl, and we would order a filet mignon and have, like, a bottle of incredible red wine and... And, and, and he go, yeah. And he goes, what do you do now? And I go, well, I'm, I will never do that. And I go, I take Ambien to go to sleep. And he goes, what the fuck? He goes, what? I go, well, I can't sleep. I'm, I'm too hyper and shit. And he, goes, he goes, oh, my God. And he goes, throw that shit in the garbage. He goes, Sebastian, do you know at the end of the day when you want to chill out after you've been rocking all day or whatever it is, and your body says, okay, man, let's have that glass of wine. Let's fucking tone it down, man. And then you take it away. Your body's going, where is that? And he goes, you're much better off health-wise never taking those sleeping pills ever again hmm. and having a glass of wine at nighttime before you go to sleep and smoking your weed. He goes, throw that shit out. And I go, what? This is my doctor. <laughs> And I go, are you sure? This is your Vegas doctor? No. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good fucking doctor. <laughs> well, yeah. Can you but give so me his I go, number? I go, oh, yeah, I go, come on, man. And at this time, at this point, I was like, a, I thought I couldn't sleep without them pills, right? So I go, <laughs> oh, I go, okay, can you just write me one more prescription for those? Because I, I just want to go to sleep. He goes, and he looked pissed off. He goes, all right. And he fucking writes it to me, and I get it and I go to the pharmacy and I go here's my prescription they bring it back to me and the ball bottle has one pill in it. <laughs> and I shake it up and I go hey this is bullshit I go there's only one fucking pill you go there, this is what your doctor yeah. I go what a prick <laughs> Sounds like old Sebastian Bach would have been a lot happier if that doctor wrote a prescription for an entire month's supply and I'm happy to inform you that there is a situation where you can get an entire month's supply of one of my favorite things in the world. It's called a Blue Chew tablet, which has the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except it's delicious, chewable, and only costs a fraction of the price. But check this out. And this is awesome because these things make it really fun to get into bed with your old lady. Um, you can get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free if you go to bluechew.com, consult with the medical provider online it's very quick and not a prick like Sebastian Box doctor. And then you use the promo code Stevo and you get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. And it's that simple dude epic so to get this entire month supply again you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code stevo and then enjoy your blue chew tablets and have a lot of fun in the sack like i do now let's get back to it <laughs> just fuck in. So I go, Doctor, so I, it's like what the fuck? One pill. Doctor feel good. Yeah. So the next night I started back on the wine, and th to make a long story even longer, the next checkup I went to, my blood pressure is perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. My heart, my blood, all that shit. Yeah, I have high blood pressure, and it's scary. My doctor told me to have some red wine at the end of the day, and yeah. now I don't have it. So I'm telling you, <laughs> I've been you sober ten years. That's probably why my together. that's probably why my blood no, pressure is so oh, high. I hate to say it, but <laughs> I'm a bad influence. No, right that's now. okay. Okay, like, okay. Yeah. So you went to grade school with Prince Andrew. Well, yeah, true? he was the, the year before me, but it was the same school. Yes, Lakefield College School. Prince Andrew came. You were very young then. 
Yeah. But it was like 1978, and he went to uh, school at Lakefield College School outside of Peterborough, and I went to that exact same school the very next year after he was gone, and I skipped the eighth grade at that school, which is pretty crazy. Because you were smart? Yeah, it was, well, as we said, I was born in the Bahamas, and my dad taught art at the school, Mary Star of the Sea School in Freeport, Bahamas, and my parents didn't really have money, and I was like three, and so my dad said, fuck it, and he put me in his class. <laughs> like, like he was like babysitting me and teaching. So, mm -hmm. so I did kindergarten in the Bahamas when I was three. Then we moved to Canada, and I did it again when I was five. So I was a little fucking bastard at that point. So you, you graduated <laughs> I knew high I had kindergarten down. I was like bossing everybody <laughs> around. Like, so do you graduate high school like at 16, 17? I didn't 17? graduate high school. I left at, in the 11th grade because I was in a band called Kid Wicked in Toronto. We played the Gasworks and Larry's Hideaway. And, and you had like the it, biggest hair. Well, yeah. It was like spiked and yeah. dark, huh? Like, yeah, I loved all that. Did I, you ever go back to get your GED? No. No. His doctor wouldn't let him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so Prince Andrew made an unfavorable impression on you. Well, no, I, you know, I used to say a bunch no of shit in magazines. Like, I used to do 10 interviews a day, so I'd think up funny stuff, and I pretended that I, you know, knew him. I never I never knew All him. All right, well, there we go. We've put that to bed. <laughs> but I did go to that. We both went to the same school. I didn't know Jeffrey Epstein either. I'll have you fucking <laughs> I wasn't in on that shit. You can fucking Google that. He went down that road. I did not. I was hanging with Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on that fucking team. Those motherfuckers. Man. Um, so <laughs> the, uh, so your dad was an, an artist. He, yes. He drew the album cover for Slave to, Slave the, to the Grind. That's right, yeah. And he had an art, a, a art gallery in Peterborough called Art Space, and he used to show in Toronto all the time at, like, Nancy Poole gallery and um goddard gallery or like all the f yorkville all that art uh -huh. community and when i was in school yeah my god you're looking this shit up yeah i'm not making it up um nancy yeah that's it with an e um gosh she's gonna be like i'm in the sebastian's interview that's weird <laughs> um so i'd be in school queen mary school peterborough ontario and uh over the loudspeaker would say, Sebastian, please come to the principal's office. I'd go, fuck, what did I do now, right? And I'd get down there, and my dad would be there. I'd go, hey, because you're, I'm taking you out of school today. I'd go, right on. And it would be to, to help him hang his show. Like, I would be nice. like his roadie. And I'd, but I would be so excited. We'd drive a truck to Toronto. I'd get and help him lift all the paintings out of the truck and hang them up. And then every time I did that, he would take me to buy comic books after nice. I was done. And and that was back like when they were like a quarter. Mm -hmm. And I could get four for a buck. And that was the most incredible feeling. I, would, I, loved, I loved comics. Because I actually lived in Cavan. Do you know where that is? I don't. It's right near Old Mimi where Neil Young grew up. And it was like... We only had like three channels, black and white channels, and then we moved to Peterborough. But when I lived in Cavan, I lived in the comic books. I lived inside those, like the Hulk. Mm. The Hulk was my favorite. Spider-Man, Power Man, Ghost Rider, and I collected them because I didn't watch TV that much. Did you save any of those? I have them fucking, I have, I have the first appearance of Spider-Man. It's worth like a quarter million dollars. It's not in perfect condition. But, but still, you do you? Yes, I fucking do. That's, yeah, that's awesome. You ever take it to yeah. Pawn Stars down the street? <laughs> no, but I, I, that I don't be know the, that what to do That wouldn't be the place it. to go. I Where know. would you go? You'd take it to an auction or something? Or Well, they have these 
grading things called the CG PSA. something yeah. CG. And that, if you get them graded mm -hmm. and, and put it, they call it slabbing mm -hmm. into Steve the clear. Steve Aoki is all about He's that. He's into that? He's all about wow. the collectibles, oh, the I'm slabbing. He's got a way, like, he's got his own, like, business for grading. Oh, you like should a, link him up and fucking. I would be, yeah. I'm into it. Get a finder's fee. Yeah. <laughs> so is also is Glenn Dan Danzig. He's really into that. God, like, big time. Man, Glenn Danzig. Are you your buddies with Glenn? I am, and it's weird, but I always tell this to people. <laughs> like, like, you hear the way I talk. You can tell that I'm a metal singer just because like, I talk high and it's raspy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like Steve Tyler, he, you can tell he fucking wails, right? Just the way he talks. I, you know, you can hear that he's been screaming. Okay. That, that's just the way it is. Vince Neil. He's like, hey, man. He's like, <laughs> yeah. hey, dude. What? A, what the fuck, man? That's <laughs> 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 like Vince. Well, fuck you. <laughs> Shout at the devil. <laughs> so, but so Glenn Danzig, the way he sings is like, mother. Yeah. Tell yeah. your children not to walk away. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, he must talk really low. But guess what, man? When I met him, he was like, hey, Sebastian. <laughs> but it's not real. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I go, what? You're Glenn Danzig. And he talks like I talk. He <laughs> talks in a high pitched, hey, how's it going? Hey, man. And I was like, this is so fucked up. Because <laughs> his voice doesn't, his singing voice is like baritone. But yeah, he did, didn't he just do a <laughs> like a, a dinner with Danzig in L.A. and he sang Elvis songs. I love, and you know what else? I mean, dude, if you listen to Legacy Brutality, it's like an Elvis impersonator yes. album. So I don't understand how he talks so high, but he does, and it's crazy. And what also trips me about uh, Glenn Danzig is his age, man. He's like... He's like fucking 75 or some shit. Yeah. Like, really. How mm. old were you when you first realized that you could sing? Well, I was in the church choir when I was uh, like eight. Was no shit. No shit. Like 78. He's 68. How old's uh, Iggy Pop? 76. He, I mean, he's wow. shirtless and looking fit. I know, right? It's amazing. Are you shirtless when you go out there? Uh, not today. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a couple weeks. I don't know. <laughs> Why'd you choose uh, Vegas to live out here? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, during the pandemic... The I, doctors are great out here. <laughs> <laughs> during, dur I lived in Thousand Oaks for like three years, and then before that, Studio City. Yeah. We got evacuated two years out of three in Thousand Oaks for fires. The fires? That, yeah. the, the big, big coming fires right near happened. Coming right near our house. And I'm like, fuck this. Like, I mean, one of the hardest gigs I ever had to do, I was in Orlando, Florida, and my house was getting evacuated while I was playing that night. And my wife's like, we're evacuated! And my kids are like, what are we taking shit? And I had to go on stage and go, hey! Like, like and, I, and I was like, like my brain was like, dude, your fucking house is going to burn down. <laughs> yeah. Like, how can I go out and rock? Yeah. But I just went out there and I said to the crowd, listen, man, my house might burn down during the show. And everybody's like, where? <laughs> 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 All right, like, well, no, I seriously. paid 20 bucks, motherfucker. <laughs> so you better sing, bitch. Yeah, no, nobody but, cares. <laughs> no, but I said, I, I said, <laughs> right on, well. It's time for the show to start. So, let's go. We are the youth gone wild, man. Let's fucking go. And I was like going up there like, ah. And you're like, I just well, don't have insurance. And everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah Actually, but what's crazy is that my house in Jersey that I lost in Hurricane Irene that happened during a concert that I was opening for Twisted Sister <laughs> wow. in fucking Colorado or something. I come off stage and like, everybody's like, hey man. And my house flooded and like I lost my home during that concert. So that really? would have been, been the second time. How, how, you had, it flooded. I was playing on 
stage in like Idaho or something. It was Godsmack, Sebastian Bach, and opening for Twisted Sister. And when I came off, there was a hurricane in Jersey. Hurricane Irene, if you want to Google yeah. that. That's Watch like this. Not that long ago, right? Right, I remember Hurricane Irene. Irene, Sebastian Bach. You want to see some fucking depressing shit? Did it take your house away or just flooded the Watch shit Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd's cheering as your fucking yeah. house. Is hey man, I, Sebastian yeah. Bach loses home to Hurricane I. Well, they have worse pictures than that. Go go back to the images because it shows my house like fucking underwater and shit. There it is. There's my house underwater. There it is, right there. Well, that's Ugh. different. That's me in the pandemic. There it is, right there. And like you're so like, you you have to move out, right? Yes. Do you have? In, do you get insurance for that? Or do you the government, know? FEMA. Yeah. Look at that. That's my fucking house underwater right there. Um, God, I hate looking at that. Um, How long were you there for? Nineteen years. Aww. man. And did you have okay, like you plaques hear, on the wall? You want to hear? It's crazy, dude. Okay, you see the water? It's like up at my gr- garage there. Uh, they sent the cops sent divers into my basement. To swim around to look for dead bodies. No the way. whole basement was under it was underwater. Ugh. What about your plaques? So then I moved to California and I get evacuated <laughs> for the fire. It's fucking great. <laughs> I moved from the flood to the fire. Yeah, now and now, the, now you gotta go move to Tennessee for the tornado. The tornado. That, <laughs> well, you know what's weird about Vegas? It's like hot as hell in the summer. But there's nothing to burn because it's just like a bunch of yeah. rocks and dirt. And yeah, what is the natural disaster here? Just well, your, your your tires might melt in your car or something. That's it. I think that uh, like water shortage would yeah, be the concern. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy now that like California is not even like doing anything for fire insurance. You it's, can't get fire. Yeah, insurance? what's the story with the fire insurance with the I mean the Fair Act plan or something? It's like insurance companies are just generally leaving California and yeah. Florida as well. I yeah. read right. So I think the two best places to move would be Vegas or uh, Ohio. I think is rated the best for climate change to have the least issues. Really? Yeah, yeah. but then you got to live in Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, are, are, how do you feel about cryptocurrency? I don't know, man. I met some guys, some guys that hired me to do a gig and they showed me on their phone they had like 100 grand and shit and my buddy Matt Sorum showed me on his phone he had like 300 grand or something I mean so I have like 200 bucks on there yeah <laughs> just to see what what happens to it but you but I don't really I don't really can you really spend it anywhere oh yeah baby. yeah yeah really yeah you can certainly uh, are you guys into it I've been super resistant to it until last night. I had dinner with an old dear friend of mine who I used to call Billo. Mm-hmm. I still call him Billo, and uh, and and he and he finally convinced me. He's also um, dying for me to text him a photo of you and I together. He's you losing his, he's losing his mind over how awesome he thinks no you are. No problem. My wife made you guys snacks and shit. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. how long have you been married? Uh, well, I've been eight years. <clears throat> eight years. Yeah. And you got kids. Yeah. How many kids? We have uh, five between both of us. Wow. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a favor? Uh huh. Our buddy Vinny is getting married tomorrow. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. You got any advice for him on a on a beautiful marriage? How long have you known her? Almost a year. Okay. And how old are you? Thirty six. Oh, I'd say do it. She's 22. She's 24. Or 24. Yeah. Almost a year. That yeah, could we, be worse. Yes, I've, I've known her since March. March of last year. Ah. Uh, the only thing I would say is that I got married way too young the first time. And I had no clue. No fucking clue. That when, like, you left your chick, you still had to... <laughs> yeah. I thought I thought you guys aren't together fucking later. Yeah. I, nobody even told me that ever. Like, yeah. Nobody fucking told me that. Good on tour and I'm cruise. still yeah. dealing. Okay, I met a chick when I was 15 and I'm 55 and I'm still giving her fucking money, man. 
Is that fair, really? Look, 15 years old, 55. Well, I, I, when I'll, does it fucking end? Like, <laughs> is it, like that's my whole life. Like child support or alimony? Just, I, I don't want to get. It's just yeah, money. <laughs> Forty years. Like, what well, is that enough? Or is it? Yeah. Like, what? Well, like, how long does it go? Like, I mean, like, holy wow. fuck! That's a big, that is brutal. That's and, a prison sentence. And if somebody says, "What would you say?" Like, holy shit, dude! If she's 24 mm -hmm. and you're 37 and she wants to break up with you like a year from now oh my god that's <laughs> not that's not good at all yeah. like, why is it not good because money but that's yeah. like ta i don't understand taxes either i don't, yeah. I, don't I don't really deal with that yeah <laughs> yeah i just paid my first taxes for the first time yeah. ever yeah. last year I, I don't understand it it's like that's why you moved to nevada you know to pay state tax that's that's a very good thing like, I just did The Masked Singer, the show, right? Yeah. Ah, cool. And it was yeah. really cool. And they paid me a fucking shitload of money. But guess what? You get half. They they mailed most of it to the fucking tax guy. <laughs> I go, what the fuck? I know. And I go, what? Since, <clears throat> they go, well, that's the way it is. I go, since when is it 65%? Like, what? <laughs> like, wow. I thought that. it was like 20%, right? But I don't know. I don't know. Then my accountant says, well, if you make more, they take more. I go, what do you mean? What kind of bullshit is that? Uh -huh. When do I get to fucking keep some shit? <laughs> Holy fuck. You give half. Here we go. My wife, you get this. You get this. What do I get? Fucking Yeah. Man. Yeah, fuck. Dude. What other kind of cool collectibles do you have besides comic books? Good change of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking right. Um, you got any other comic, cool collectible I collect, comic books? I collect Kiss stuff. Cars. Wow. No, that... I collect. I collect uh, Kiss memorabilia, and I, I and I collect vinyl. Like I okay. really collect vinyl. Cool. Not Check just this every, out. All vinyl. Sebastian is such a f fan of Kiss. Yeah, I am. That it actually caused Skid Row to break up. Well, that, I mean, <laughs> because... In a way, in a way. Because there was an opportunity for Skid Row to open for Kiss right. on a Kiss reunion tour in 1996. Yes. And Sebastian says, I'm a fucking huge Kiss fan. That's right. He booked it. Then his bandmates found out that they were booked, Skid Row was booked to open for Kiss. And they had, they took umbrage with that. They said, Skid Row is way too big of a band to be an open opening act. No, no, no. That's 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 not what happened. All right, let's get the truth. Uh, what happened is the bass player had a side project, a punk band that he got together with the road crew guys from Skid Row. And they were busy and he couldn't do the gig cuz he cuz of the side project. And I, and I got very angry and I called the guitar player, let him know what I thought. And on he, a voice, on a, on a, on a voice. Well, yeah, yeah he an didn't, answering machine. He didn't pick up, so I just went, "You fucking motherfucker!" <laughs> <laughs> and I just let him know. It was very, very what I thought of them not letting me play with Kiss at the reunion tour of Kiss in Jersey at the Meadowlands Arena. Fuck. And that was the last straw. And if you ask the, the bass player of them, they'll, they'll go, "That was there was a lot of shit leading up to that, but that was the very last." So it was Kiss. Well, Kiss. Dave said when, because he goes, "My whole family heard that fucking message." <laughs> he goes, "That came out of the fucking speaker, and my whole family was there. It was Christmas because it was New Year's <laughs> Eve." But I was like. That was a bridge too far. <laughs> I'm coming over there right fucking now! <laughs> and fucking... Yeah. A answering machines when the whole family can listen. It's like... He goes, that was it. I feel like in the 80s, like, rockers just calling each other, like, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> like, just a whole mixtape of, like, 80s answering machine from rocker to rocker would be awesome. I got kicked out of a Kiss concert during that what? reunion tour. You did? Yeah. For what? For what? For... <laughs> Fire breathing in the stands. Oh, <laughs> I was just like, dude, I know Jim Simmons is big into fire breathing, and I'm like, dude, I'm ready, and I'm, I'm just like in the stands, mm. and I just, I just popped one off. Oh my lord! Huge fireball, and they're like, you're out of here. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Were you on and acid? And I'm like, you know what? Like, uh, you got me. Yeah, you got me. 
And everybody knows I blew a bigger fireball <laughs> <laughs> than Gene Simmons. Well, also, Gene Simmons never jumped out of a plane and, and, and came. And <laughs> I mean, that's pretty tough to beat right there. Yeah. I don't know how you can compartmentalize when you're jumping out yeah. of a plane. Well, thank you. Shoot thank a big you. load. Like, yeah, I couldn't do I it. I got to be like, you know, kind of... <laughs> Well, they, thank you for knowing that, man. And thank cheers. you for knowing that. <laughs> dude, I love it. Um, dude, so, so tell us about your new music. I have a new song. It's called What Do I Got to Lose? And it's co-written with uh, Miles Kennedy. And I am pleased to say that it was the number one most added song on Active Rock uh, a couple weeks ago in the United States. And I've been doing this for... for almost 40 years and for the radio stations in America to play my new shit that means so much to me that's really incredible to me like I don't just have to play the old songs right like yeah. I, I can throw this fucker in there now that's, that's awesome yeah. so and I love that I love that when you make a song you want to go on the radio versus Spotify and YouTube right like the radio I'm still old, the... I'm old school Spotify don't pay shit yeah yeah. Everybody knows that. I just, uh, there's no feeling like the radio, like getting in your car, putting the radio on, and hearing yourself. Like, that's, that never gets old. That's cool. And I gotta, I actually gotta give a shout out to Sirius XM because I think that is really good for my career. Like, guys like me, every car that you buy comes installed with Sirius yeah. XM, right? And then you have the option after two weeks or whatever mm -hmm. to get. But for those two weeks, <laughs> like every, every five songs on Channel 39 is me. Like I'm like Michael McDonald of nice. Yacht Rock. Like every every third song, I can say, "You will hear, hey, hey, oh sweet freedom, shiny light on me." Like, <laughs> you know, and I go every three songs, you're gonna hear Michael McDonald sing, and you, you can time it. And so he has that channel, and I got channel 39, Hair Nation. What are they referencing? I don't, I don't even know what they call it. <laughs> I want to be known for my Oh, life. are you uh, at all involved in the, um, the docu-series, Nothing But a Good Time? No. God damn it. Because our jackass director, Jeff Tremaine, mm -hmm. is helming the... Uh, adaptation of the book nothing but a good time which is all about 80s hair metal right and uh and he's making it for paramount plus where it will probably also like live on linear for vh1 or mtv or you know whatever but uh but yeah that pisses me off that you're not a part of that well i read that book and i, I didn't like it or you didn't no what was, the, what was your did issue? You, did you read it? I did not. Well, you can Come on, read, you books can these read days. it and then and then ask me. All right. Click on that Amazon one. Yeah. Nothing but a that's good the time. That's the uncensored history. Wow. And you you didn't like this one? No. But were, were they unfair to you? I I am just gonna say if you read it, then you could ask me about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because I actually read it. So. Okay, fair enough. Um, a lot of people have asked me about this, and then I say, did you read it? And every one of them says no. <laughs> and I go, well, don't fucking ask me about it unless you read it. <laughs> I, okay, fair enough. I uh, was interviewed by Jeff Tremaine for the, the show. Uh -huh. And um, what did uh, I had something or other? Is that out? It's, not, it's out. not out yet, not but, out. but I think they've... they've That's been they've, out for years. The book has been out. No, 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 the no, the Tremaine yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they've delivered it. I don't believe it's out yet. And um, Brett Michaels uh, became good buddies with uh, Shauna, who's Tremaine's sort of uh, partner mm -hmm. in production. Are, are you buddies with Brett Michaels? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. He's a hard-working guy. God, he's great. Well, I opened up a Poison tour... And um, he would say at the end of the Poison show, hey, man, we're doing another show in an hour from now at fucking Jimmy's Barbecue <laughs> down the street. You're all invited. <laughs> he would, 
I'd be exhausted, right? After yeah. playing for 45 minutes. <laughs> he would do a full Poison show and then book a solo Brett Michaels show that night, <laughs> like right down the street. Yeah. And then he'd go, come on down, and I'd go down there, and he would be signing T-shirts for chicks for fucking till 3 in the morning. And I'd be like, <laughs> and he's like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? I go, this motherfucker has a lot of energy. Yeah. Well, he's a very hardworking guy. That's epic, man. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you said that your your new song, the single's getting radio airplay, but presumably yeah. it's part of an album? It is, yeah. And what's the name of the album? Oh, fuck. I don't know if I could say that right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Know. So that well, they have it all staggered. Okay, got it. So the single's come out, the album's not out that's yet. That's right, that's right. Okay, But good. the next song we're doing is uh, a song I wrote with John Five from Motley Crue. Oh, wow. And he plays incredible on it. Um, uh, and we're get, getting ready to do that video. I would love for you to be in a video, dude. Yeah, love it. Let's be do it. some crazy shit. <laughs> Light your nuts on Epic. fire or something. Dude, I'm, I'm into it. Yeah, we're not too far from Vegas. Come okay, on. that would be great. Craig Gass is in the first one. Press play oh, there. Man, I love Craig Gass. Can you press play there? And I would like you to be. Dude, the, I, I'm, I'm down. Dude, I'm you super be in a rock down. video? Dude, I'm super down, bro. Fuck. Dude, dude like, <laughs> I don't say this very often, oh my but like, God. you're one of my favorite new people. Are you yeah, kidding this me? This has been a hoot, dude. We've been cracking up the entire time. Oh my yeah. lord. You know, like, we, we, we fall in love with some guests. But not all the time, man. Wow. You're funnier uh, than D. Snyder. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean we've laughed pretty damn hard this whole time, dude. It's been a it's been a joy. Wow. Um, are, do you do social media and stuff? I do, but as I get older, uh, it becomes like a chore to me. Yeah, it's like because there's so many platforms. Like I gotta post this on Instagram and then share it to Facebook and then share that to Twitter and then you can't forget about threads and then don't you gotta post TikTok. it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And then you, I, I don't have fucking time to do that. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah, it's uh, It just becomes like a, a job. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. a job. But it's like kind of a, it, I love putting my video up and having it available so we can watch it anywhere. That's great. You yeah. know, it's good for getting the word out on shit, but it can consume your fucking life if you let it. If you just yep. sit there all day, mm -hmm. it, it can true. consume your life. So. Well, it's just Sebastian Bach on Instagram, same across all the yeah, platforms. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, dude, I'm going to jump on that, dude. I'm going to follow Well, you I'm going to tell my people that you want to be in a video dude let's do it oh my god that is killer bro yeah dude that's exciting what's the next video well there's one come, coming called freedom and we're talking to dane cook about that one okay dane's my buddy yeah but he's pretty busy but um and then there's one called oh, wait i can't i don't know if i can be saying yeah. this All right, but anyways i'm gonna get your digits yeah and yeah you got it we'll line it up because i got a great director and we're you know they're got good budgets and cool, like man. it's a real video dude i love it man <laughs> that's sick, so dude. sick I, they wait, don't wait. they don't shoot a lot of videos these days no. you know so yeah well dude we'll, we'll do it man i'm in okay are you guys driving back to la right now no no no, no, no. you stay in vegas he, he's getting married tomorrow getting married in tomorrow. vegas yeah. yeah in vegas well, what are you doing tonight Tonight I got date night with my lady. Not and she in Vegas. She's in Vegas. Nice. Yeah. She's losing her mind over how well, she, I, like how she great would it love is. to meet. Uh, I mean, my wife would love to meet your wife. Well, like uh, I, I, I will run it by my lady. We'll we'll see what happens. Can and, you guys uh, come in now and say sure? Are, yeah. You, are we done? We're done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, how was that for a wild ride, huh? Did I tell you? Amazing. Um, so let me check in with my street team. Um, I'm here on this uh, Impractical Jokers cruise. I've been uh, meeting people who have identified themselves as street team. I love that we don't even make a big deal out of like what that is anymore. You, you either know or you don't know. If you're street team, you know. And if you're street team, I love you. We're having a blast. Show the room for the people who have video component. We got Scott Randolph, we got Daniel Maya, Paul Brisky, Isaac Patterson, and turn it on yourself, old Skinny Vinny, the newlywed. Yeah, dude. It's uh, just the boys in the middle of the ocean having a blast. And uh, for this cruise, I put together a uh, new show, man. 
Like I had to, like that was the way, you know, I have to do a show on stage for an hour. And I'm like, dude, my God, my bucket list tour is over. My next tour, I haven't put the show together. Like I don't have a show. And, uh, and it was like, man, I just, I just got to it. I sat down and huge props to the gorgeous Paul Brisky over there who helped me develop what, uh, what we brought to the stage. Just a blistering, like, obscene and and frankly shameful journey through uh the most awful and and inappropriate things in the whole history of of jackass wild boys steve-o like uh basically the worst of the worst and um i, I mixed it all together into uh kind of a uh you know my, my plans and my progress for uh my next tour so it'll gradually morph into my next tour and uh, I'm just excited about it, and that's why I told you, dude. Uh, if you're on this cruise, man, fucking shout out. Let's go. And uh, if you're not on this cruise, I love you anyway. <laughs> yeah. You.